Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Larry Olson, and I'm a retired pastor. I've served at uh, Edison Lutheran Church for 14 years, but I feel very connected to Oak Harbor Lutheran Church also because I had the privilege of serving as the interim pastor a bunch of years ago. I'd say plenty of years ago, wouldn't you, Martha? <laughs> we won't go into details, <laughs> but my kids were kids when we were here. Um, I'm fairly familiar with the order of service, but I have Mary on standby and Verna over here, and if I look like I'm lost, you'll know that I probably am and I'm seeking help. So, with all of that in mind, I invite you to stand as you are able for the order for confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> we begin our worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us. And, by, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I de therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our first hymn as we gather at your table.
as you forgive, may we still behold your image, the world you died to save. That feast, send us forth to destroy as we join with saints and just repeat the sounding joy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then Jews disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me. And I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which, our, which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. A word of explanation. I, um, I had a brain tumor a year and a half ago, 
and that resulted in rather extensive surgery. And I never know since then when my mouth will just be very dry. So I'm not advertising for Starbucks. I just need, I just need a little bit of something. With that in mind, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Four weeks ago, we began this series of readings from the Gospel of John where Jesus explains that he is the bread of life. Not just any bread, but living bread, real bread. Bread with a capital B, not like any other bread. And step by step over these weeks, Jesus has taken us, his followers, from being the ones who follow him just because Jesus can feed a bunch of people in short notice, but because he does miracles. He does miracles of feeding people to fill their empty stomach to say that he, Jesus, is the living bread come from heaven, and he is here to meet the deeper needs of the people. When I was a young child growing up in western Wisconsin, I remember my mother going through the ritual of baking bread. It was always a treat to smell those first smells in the morning because even when that yeast begins to work, you can smell something good is happening. And as we, my sisters and brothers and I, left the house, by the time we headed out the door, we knew we couldn't wait to get home to see what miracles had happened. There might be cinnamon rolls on the table, or there may be a loaf of cinnamon bread waiting to be toasted. And there would be several loaves of bread lined up on the counter, ready to be eaten for supper that night. And in Wisconsin, it was supper, not dinner. And for lunch boxes for days to come. Now, as I look back on that, it was about much more than just that wonderful aroma. It was about much more than the smell of cinnamon and bread baking and rising. It was also, I, w I know now, it was how my mother nourished us and fed us by herself, by her energy, by her lifeblood. For into that bread went her hard work, and into that bread went her hopes and her dreams for sustaining her large family. She was investing herself in our lives and in our health and in our future. And as I think about it, she brought her own genealogy, her own family history into the next generation because she grew up with a mom who baked bread a couple or three times a week. It was a gift. That is the truth. And I might also add that we, my siblings and I, were not quick to appreciate that gift because we couldn't understand why we couldn't have bread from the store like our cool friends. When Jesus began to speak of being the bread of life, the nourishment of God, the religious folks of the day, got upset. You might say they were ticked off. Jesus was, uh, these people could not grasp that Jesus was nourishment in a very special, very unique way. Jesus came back to it time and time again to say that by his very life, his suffering, his death, and eventual resurrection, he would become life for those who lived in relationship with God. He was saying that he was a bread and blood commitment. I 
I'm reading this and think I really need to work on my typing. But that's another story. When I was in college, there was a fairly well-known health food store near our campus. And their slogan, boldly painted on their front window, was, you are what you eat. Think about that. I doubt that the disciples had ever heard such a cliche, but I wonder if that wouldn't have been a helpful phrase to them. We know now that through the wonders of the human body, what we eat and drink does become part of us. It's certainly better for us if we concentrate on salad and fruit and vegetables and whole grain, but how much more fun it is to pig out on coffee and donuts and chips and soda. Whatever we, we eat and drink, we can, whatever we consume ends up nourishing our blood. And the blood in, in turn sur nourishes every cell in our bodies. That, that simple biological fact presents a very graphic picture of Jesus remaining in us. Jesus is not just in our hearts or just in our heads, but when we eat the bread, capital B, and wine, Jesus becomes part of us, and we become him. The possibilities are endless, or should I say, the realities are endless. When we eat the bread and drink the wine or grape juice at this altar, we are receiving the body and blood of Christ. We're receiving the benefits that Jesus promises, and we are becoming more Christ-like. Our gospel lesson for this morning is loaded with information about the gifts of, or the benefits. Verse 51 reminds us that Jesus is the living bread, and that whoever eats this bread will live forever. Verse 53 says that we will have Jesus' life in ourselves. Verse 54, you have eternal life. Verse 56 reminds us that through this eating, we remain in Jesus, and importantly, Jesus remains in us. Verse 57, you will live through Jesus. And verse 58 ends that segment with the recap good news that the one who eats this bread will live forever. One of the things I remember about my, from my seminary days is to watch for the number of times a word is repeated within a given passage. Life and living are repeated ten times in these few verses. When I read this passage, I see that every single verse is packed with importance for us. But I keep going back to verse 57 and its reminder of the relationship between Jesus and God and us. Jesus is sent by the Father, and the source of Jesus' strength, the very root of Jesus' being, is God the Father. If we carry that genealogy further, we realize that the source of our strength, the very root of our being, is our relationship with Jesus. When Jesus began to speak of being the bread of life, the nourishment of God, the religious leaders of the day were very upset. As I said just a few moments ago, they could not that Jesus was life-giving. It's time and time again. Jesus came back to, uh, to it time and time again to say that by his very life, by his suffering, his death, his resurrection, he would become life for us. Jesus is saying that in giving himself, he is no quick fix, no snack, no simple multiplying of food so there is enough for everyone. He is life for
for those who strive, those who live lives full of grace, those who struggle in our daily journeys. Jesus desires to become with one with us, to flow through all of what we are and do. Several years ago, at the Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena, uh, they had their parade as usual. On this particular year, the Standard Oil Company, and Standard Oil alone tells you how long ago this was, but they boasted openly and heartily about how magnificent their, fro their float was going to be in the parade. It would be a crowd stopper. They bragged it up, and they had gone all the way to uh, to make this uh, float noteworthy and memorable. But as the float began to make its way down the route, the float stopped in its tracks. The people who were escorting it tried everything in their power to get that float moving. The mechanics tried everything to get it started again, but it just wouldn't. They had to push the float to the side of the route at the very beginning of the route. Eventually, what did the experts discover? It was out of gas. <laughs> Standard oil company, which sold gasoline, among many other things, had forgotten take, to take advantage of the resources at their very fingertips. We learn a lot today. We learn we are called in many ways. We are called to love one another, to help one another, to feed one another. We are called to share the good news that Christ has died and is risen again. That's the fuel for all of us that empowers us for the journey. We are called to hold fast to the good news that Christ lives in us, and we can't do these things without coming to this altar and receiving the bread, capital B, and the wine, all which sustains us. Amen. We sing our next hymn, which is... O bread of life from heaven.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people in any need. Dear Father, feed us with wisdom and righteousness. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Nourish us with the love and the life of your dear Son. Nourish the church with the fine bread and choice wine of Jesus' own body and blood. Fill it with your heavenly light and life. Let that light cheer many hearts and guide many lives to you. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> As wisdom sets her feast before everyone, move the hearts of earthly rulers to heed her invitation and sit at her table. Feed them all they need to think, speak, and act in accordance with your will. Let all who are entrusted to their care prosper and live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the righteous and of all who suffer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers on behalf of all who are afflicted by pain, grief, shame, or despair. Restore their health hope, and joy in the company of all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, giver of life, we pray for members of our congregation who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Johannes Christensen, Bob Martin, Amanda Reitz, and Chris Bruland. Bring their celebrations Bless their celebrations with the joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, feed the members of this congregation with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord, and joy in your presence. Grant that we gladly and graciously share this feast with our families, neighbors, friends, and communities. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. How do you usually share the peace during this time of... Oh. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please be seated. Do I do announcements, Verna? Okay. <laughs> I didn't see Mary. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Tonight at 6 p.m., we'll have our final summer youth and family event, a chalk art festival in the parking lot. Each participant will have a spot in the parking lot to transform. Well, that sounds like fun. A basic set of sidewalk chalk colors will be provided as well as providing snacks tonight. 
all skill level levels are welcome. So, see you tonight at 6 p.m. I think that sounds like a fun thing, and maybe we can get some pictures in the newsletter, or even the, the Lutheran, the Spirit Synod newsletter. Pastor Jeff is driving home today after moving his son into his dorm at WSU yesterday. And he will be back in the office on Tuesday. Friday is the deadline, deadline for the September newsletter. If you have anything you'd like to include, please get it to Martha by the end of the day on Friday. I can hardly believe we're talking September already. Next Sunday, Pastor Josh Stromberg, who is the new pastor at El Camino de Amaus Lutheran Church in Burlington, will be here and he'll bring a short greeting and up to date during each service and he'll be available between services to visit and answer questions. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, we will receive the offering. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth fill of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Elizabeth, God bless you and keep you today and always. Amen. And what is your name? Anna. Anna, God bless you and keep you today and always. Amen. Grandma, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Martha. given for you. The body of Christ 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 given for you. Christ given for you. The 
body of Christ given for you, okay? David, the body of Christ given for you. 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 given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Mary. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you. Tom, the body of Christ given for you. 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 Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Do we have a sending hymn? Yes. Okay. Let us go. In, oh, I'll say it from the back. Yeah. Thank you for tolerating me. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Oh, in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. See what I mean? <laughs> Well, I'm a big fan of oh, Garrison. Oh, he's awesome, isn't he? Yes, he is. 